things we wanted uh, to create in our church space was devotional spaces. Uh, and so a, a whole chapel to the Blessed Mother, a chapel to St. Joseph, a chapel to St. Clair, and so forth. So in the chapel of St. Clair, some beautiful things. First of all, um, I'll focus on the stained glass window. And the stained glass window is in one of the other treasures that we brought from the original church from the 1800s. So it, it comes from the uh, late 19th century um, as well. So in the window, you'll see a couple beautiful things. First of all, just the, the beautiful light and her very sort of motherly face. Um, so she was called Mother Claire by her sisters. And there's a real motherly look um, to her that I, I like a lot. And so first you'll see what she's holding, um, that of the monstrance that I talked about in our crucifix and the importance of the Eucharist. So saints are often portrayed um, holding things uh, that, uh, for which they stand or what they did in their life or how they died. So Claire was known for her Eucharistic devotion, so she's um, almost always shown with a monstrance in her um, hand. In her other hand, um, she has a red book. Um, this would be uh, the rule that she wrote or, um, for the poor Claire sisters. So she took St. Francis's rule, when I talk about rule, like the guidelines of how to live as a poor Claire. So she took uh, St. Francis's rule for the Franciscans, and then she wrote that a specific rule for her um, poor Claire sisters. And in that rule, lots of things, but one of the things that made Claire and the poor Claire um, order unique um, was her calling to a life of severe poverty. And so she talks about the beauty of that life of poverty um, in this rule that she has. So that's what she's holding in her other book. Now let's look at her garments um, briefly. Um, first of all, you'll see uh, that she's wearing a purple cape. Her purple cape can represent a couple things. One is that she came from royalty. Only wealthy people wore purple. So in one sense, so she's wearing purple that she, um, she came from royalty. Um, and, uh, and then she gave all that up and started following Francis and then starts her own um, order, if you will. But now if you think about it, her purple represents a new type of royalty that she took on when she took on this, um, uh, this real strong calling to follow Christ um, and the royalty of our baptism. So the purple can represent a whole new kind of royalty. Under that, you'll see this, the brown fabric coming down the middle, um, which is a scapular. Uh, it's called a scapular because it literally uh, rests on the scapulars of your um, shoulders. And a lot of orders have this scapular. So the brown one represents the Franciscans uh, that Claire is a part of. So that re that's her Franciscan robe that she has on. She has little sandals on to show again her calling to poverty. So she gave up her very fancy shoes and has simple sandals on. Uh, and oftentimes the poor Claire nuns um, are barefoot. Around that you just see the, the Gothic structure, the Gothic spires and so forth. And that was connected to the previous church that had a much more neo-Gothic feel to it. So the windows were a little more um, Gothic there. Now in the bottom, you'll see it says St. Clair of Assisi. Of course, that tells you who this is. Um, but in the original window, it, that was not there. We added that when we moved this window from the old church to this new place uh, of our own devotion. And it used to say at the bottom of there, um, the Virgin Society. So in those days, there were all these clubs and organizations in a parish, and then they would make donations, raise fundraisers, and then donate particular things. So this window had been donated by the Virgin Society. Um, and we removed that A as people wouldn't necessarily know what that was. Um, and because it said Virgin Society, most people thought this stained glass window was the Virgin Mary. Um, so they called, oh, we love the stained glass window of Mary. And I always had to correct them saying, well, that's St. Clair. And so we wanted to specifically put her name at the bottom of the window there. There's all kinds of other artistic dimensions to this window, but I wanted to just highlight a few of them that really speak of Clare's spirituality and us trying to bring some of that into our parish group. Say, to the side of the St. Clair uh, window, you'll see um, a wood carved cross. Um, and this is the Tau cross, uh, which is a traditionally Franciscan design of a cross, which is they say is probably most similar to the type of cross that Christ would have died on. This particular one was purchased by um, some of the people on a recent pilgrimage we did to Assisi, and it's carved out of this ancient uh, olive tree wood. So the olive tree had died, um, and they took this big trunk, and they cut it out, so you got this really gnarly sort of a, a wood in one sense, but also kind of a, a burrowed wood uh, when an olive uh, tree is shade down, you get the beautiful texture there. So it's a great addition um, to our space of connecting the Franciscan spirituality 
and the importance of the Tau Cross. To the other side of the St. Clair window in the St. Clair Chapel is a nice statue of St. Francis. I like this image of him. He's in kind of a devotional prayer space where he's looking up to heaven um, in prayer, which is also the image he has when he received the stigmata, kind of just looking up and he just kind of went into this ecstatic prayer with God and received the wounds of Christ that you'll see the stigmata, one of the few saints that have the stigmata, were, which are the actual markings of Christ's nails um, in the palm of his hands from which he suffered um, terribly. And Claire actually used to make these linen bandages and wraps for his hands because the stigmata was so painful for him. So in the saints of St. Clair, basically you have a couple things. Um, one is, again, he's holding a red book, which would be the Franciscan rule um, that he created for his uh, Franciscan brothers and priests to live the life of, of poverty and following the gospel very severely, if you will. He's holding the cross, which was always his uh, devotional prayer. Um, the rosary there, you'll see the white robe around him, and um, on that you'll see uh, Franciscan, there's three knots on the cincture around his waist three knots represent the three parts of the Franciscan vows, and that is chastity, obedience, and poverty. At his feet, again, often uh, in Franciscan images of St. Francis, you'll, have, you'll see the skull. And a lot of the young people often ask, why is there a skull uh, at the feet of St. Francis? The skull is there representing, if you remember in the Canticle of Creation, Francis was praising God for the beauty of the sun and the, the moon and the seeds and the rain. So he goes through all of creation um, praising God. And then he says, and I also give you praise to God for death. And he called death Sister Death. And Francis would um, oftentimes meditate on his death, which allowed him to be detached from this life. So the skull represents this, another part of Francis's spirituality of accepting that even in death, he writes, creation, that even in death, I give you praise God, because then I get to enter into eternal life with you. So next time you're in this chapel, spend some time with Mother Claire and her beautiful motherly eyes, um, and this image of Francis, um, as we all pray for uh, a life of greater simplicity and embracing of the poverty of spirit that Christ calls us. One more image of St. Claire we have here in our church is in the gathering space, and I just want to point it out um, because of its um, history. This uh, tapestry um, we got in uh, CC, um, Italy, in one of our last pilgrimages. Um, and what I like about it is that it's an image from uh, the, probably one of the oldest images of Claire that we have. And it was painted by Giotto in the St. Francis Basilica in Assisi. Um, and there's this whole life of St. Claire um, painted um, in frescoes on the wall of St. Francis Basilica. So it's one of the oldest images that we have um, of her. Um, it's also one of the most popular, if you will. You'll see this image in a lot of different places. So we wanted to have um, a version of it. Again, you'll see kind of like in our stained glass window, you'll see her in these robes that sort of present her royalty of her past when she had earthly royalty and now presents her in her heavenly royalty of these, um, you know, this royal a cape that she's wearing, but yet in her Franciscan robe and her Franciscan um, cincture uh, representing her commitment to uh, poverty, chastity, and obedience. And again, she's holding uh, the uh, lily stem as a sign of her uh, virginity. So a great way to remember Claire as you come into the church um, and remember her faithfulness um, and her dedication, how she prays for us um, and intercedes for us as a parish dedicated. I want to talk briefly about um, our beautiful Ambry, um, where our holy oils um, are stored. And you may notice that it's uh, across from the St. Clair window that we talked about earlier, um, and in the middle of it is our baptismal font. So first, just the location of it is um, beautifully placed here, um, adjacent to the baptismal font, since uh, a couple of the oils are connected with the sacrament of baptism, but they're also just connected with sacraments of initiation um, and healing as well that are all part of what we do here in the church. I come in the church and I say, oh, there's oils here. There must be healing rituals here because oils themselves um, come from ancient practice of using oils way before Christ. Uh, the particular oils that are blessed um, are actually olive oil, and then they're blessed by the bishop, um, and particularly one of them, the chrism oil, is consecrated. So first I just want to briefly talk about the location of it near the baptismal font, and then I'm just going to say briefly about the three types of oils that are in here. Um, the door opens up, and uh, there's the 
chrism oil that's used um, in baptism, confirmation, and the ordination of priests. And the only other time that chrism oil is used um, when an uh, altar is consecrated and a church is consecrated. So the chrism oil is up there. Um, and the chrism is uh, named chrism for Christ. So when we use it, we're asking God to make this person, this baptized baby, this uh, young adult being uh, confirmed and this priest more and more like Christ. So Christ chrism oil. I always, I always tell the, the confirmation students, we're gonna make you um, more, more Christ-like in all your behaviors when you are, have the chrism oil spread on your forehead. Then we have the um, oil of the sick. Um, that we'll, I'm going to talk about a little bit, and then the oil of catechumens. Uh, the oil of catechumens, people are less familiar with it because it's um, primarily used for those who are entering uh, the church through the RCIA process, and catechumen means a learner or a student of the faith. And so after one is accepted through the RCIA ritual rite of acceptance, um, and then as they're going through their journey into the Easter sacraments, uh, we use the oil of catechumens a couple times um, during their journey um, to strengthen them. So it's meant to strengthen them um, in their call to deepen their relationship with Christ and entry into the church um, because they're gonna face, especially the devil's temptations um, to, last thing he wants is for them to become more like Christ. So the oil of catechumen is meant to strengthen them um, on their journey. So that's a brief overview um, of the three oils in our amber here right next to the baptismal font. I wanna say a little bit about the particular design of our uh, Ambry and how it was put together. Um, when, I, like the rest of our church, we wanted to find an artist um, skilled in liturgical art. And so we we're fortunate to find an artist out in Seattle, Washington. Uh, his name is Steve Hurt, um, who does beautiful um, liturgical items and other uh, commercial items as well. And uh, so we got in touch with Steve. We wanted to express um, our desire to connect with the simplicity of our church and the use of natural um, elements um, like stone. So together we came up with this idea of, of looking for a piece of jade stone. And from there I learned kind of an interesting history of different types of jade. Um, and there's jade from the ocean that a lot of times people think of with jewelry. And then this particular jade that comes from um, a mountain um, is called nephrite um, jade. And this particular piece of jade stone comes from Mount Baker, which is north of Seattle, almost near the Canadian border. Maybe some of you have been there before. So these big chunks of this jadeite stone are carved from this mountain, dug out, um, and then uh, Stephen Hurt um, carves them and designs them. So we wanted to have um, the jade element um, included. So he did it in sort of a, of a curve, and then inside of behind there, between two pieces of, of the jade stone, are these built-in shelves um, for the three um, oils there. Um, also on the jade um, are the different um, names of the oils um, and their Latin description of them, kind of connecting to the great history of the oils and the mother language of Latin. So it's easy to then reach into the oils um, to uh, grab them for like the oil of catechumens. And then uh, Stephen also did these beautiful, um, these are hand-blown glass um, vessels that he created um, as well for, you'll see the, uh, the way it's um, like functional with these ridges on it for holding, but also kind of a very simple artistic design um, to them to show kind of the significance of each vessel holding these holy oils. So uh, we also made it obviously with a, a door to be able to have easy access. Um, and then we'll talk a little bit about the um, door that's open to the other side as well. So now I'm on the other side of the Ambry in the Reconciliation Chapel that I also use for as a chapel for the anointing of the sick sacrament. So in here you'll see that we put, we added a door on this side, part of the ideas behind Ken Griesmer recommended to us, so that um, then the oils will be easily accessible um, for prayer in this chapel. So I'm always honored when parishioners um, come and ask for the sacrament of anointing to be a part of this time in their life. Um, when people um, ask for the sacrament of anointing and confession, the two sacraments of healing, um, it's very humbling for me as a priest to be this minister of Christ's compassion and, and healing power that all comes from Jesus himself. So in this design, again, first of all, we, you'll see the, the other half of the jade stone here. Um, and also the, the jade is this ancient Chinese stone um, representing the virtues of um, compassion and justice um, and healing power that the Chinese culture um, have been uh, believed in for thousands and thousands of years. So you'll see the beautiful grains um, in the jade stone. And then from here, it's easily accessible to reach the vessel for the sacrament um, of anointing with the uh, holy oil for the anointing and then putting it back in there. 
So again, um, when parishioners come and ask for the sacrament of anointing, here at St. Clair, we, uh, as the church teaches, we have the sacrament of anointing done twice publicly um, because the whole community is called to pray for those who are sick. But sometimes people come and want um, their own uh, sacrament of anointing individually or with a family. So it's wonderful to be able to bring them into this healing chapel um, to have a prayer together with them in kind of an intimate, um, close space. So when we think about the healing power um, that Jesus um, had and then he entrusted to the church, um, people came to him all the time wanting healing. And so then he commissioned the church um, and empowered the whole church to be that healing presence um, in place of him. And I love what the Catechism um, says about this sacrament of anointing that I'm referring to because of one of the three oils. And it's the Catechism puts it this way. The Lord Jesus Christ, physician of our souls and bodies, who forgave the sins of the paralytic and restored him to bodily health, has willed that his church continue in the power of the Holy Spirit his work of healing and salvation among her own members. So this is the purpose of the two sacraments of, of penance um, and the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. The ultimate healing sacrament, of course, um, is the holy sacrifice of the mass and all the other sacraments kind of flow from baptism and then the grace from the sacraments um, as well. In this uh, chapel for uh, the sacrament of penance, reconciliation, and anointing, um, we have two other images of healing that maybe you've never seen um, before. Um, one of them is this famous uh, painting by Rembrandt, uh, The Return of the Prodigal Son, um, also made famous by the great book of Henry Nouwen, uh, The Prodigal Son. And in it, you capture uh, from that uh, great uh, gospel passage from uh, Luke, um, the image of the, of the father welcoming back the prodigal son um, and the other brothers and those um, looking on. So we have this in here too, which is a great image of healing and especially for the sacrament of uh, penance. And then the other image is unique um, and that is of St. Joseph, um, in a sense being anointed uh, by Jesus. Um, Jesus and Mary are praying at the, while Joseph is uh, close to dying. Um, so St. Joseph is the patron of a happy death. And we bring this statue out um, into the gathering space uh, during the month of November as we're praying for um, all the faithful departed um, and kind of starting with the Feast of All Souls. And so it's basically just kind of an image of uh, the grieving that Jesus himself went through of losing his stepfather, but also it's sort of a, a prelude to the sacrament of anointing of what Christ offered in praying for uh, Joseph. So next time you witness uh, one of these sacraments um, at the parish, either a, a baptism or holding the baby up, celebrating our new life in Christ, um, or the sacrament of anointing, um, the community praying for all those who are sick, um, just make the connection with our beautiful um, Ambry and the power of the sacraments Christ has empowered to the church um, and this beautiful piece of artwork.